mean, I think we'll kick off. I think we'll kick off and just let the others arrive. Let's say John and Stephen uh, have said in the uh, WhatsApp group that they're, they're, they're on their way. So, first of all, let's see if I can get the agenda in front of me. Uh, welcome to the July meeting of the ABC Business Network. Um, this, the idea is to connect with each other, to help each other grow. So as much as this is a, a, a once a month meeting, I encourage people to connect with each other during the month, uh, find out a bit, a bit more about each other. Each month we go through uh, this meeting and the, the, the general structure is we'll do a, a bit of a one or two minute elevator pitch, find out about everyone. And then we have a, a guest speaker or, or a member speaker. And this week we have the very wide awake, Mark Fagan, telling us all about um, how to prep your house to make it look good for uh, selling. Uh, and lots more, I'm sure, about the state agency business. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, like I said, this, this meeting has been very good. Very good last month's meeting. It was a uh, great meeting. It was quite fun. People turned up for that there. And as a member of Benefit, it was uh, privately, privately shared on the WhatsApp group to be um, reviewed if you missed it. Now, we were talking in the committee during the month, and we've decided to make those these meetings public. So unless anybody has any concerns about that, if you do, please put it in the comment section below so I will have a record of that, so I'll keep a, keep a record of those comments. Uh, I think it's benefit to us all because anybody that can't attend the meeting can, can look at our YouTube channel and we'll see the meeting and get a, a bit of a visibility both of our elevator pitches and of uh, the insightful talks that we do and the wonderful family that we are here at the ABC Business Network. So, uh, yes, like I say, any concerns about that? Also, put all your details in the chat box. Um, again, if you have. If you are a member and you've looked at the WhatsApp group and, and seen the, the private video from the last month, I put little time codes so you can jump straight to an individual's contact details, script an individual's elevator pitch to make it very useful and handy to, uh, to share details about people. Uh, last month we, we put up about the charity, so we'll put, uh, there's a poll and hopefully Esther, if you can put in the chat box, uh, a link to the uh, voting uh, poll for which charity should be our uh, nominated charity. We were hoping to announce it today, but we only got seven people voting, and, and again, it's not anonymous, so I don't know who voted and who hasn't yet. But I'm almost guessing it's, it's because, we, because we set up the poll, it's the committee who all voted. But so please go along either through the WhatsApp group or again, hopefully, yes, we'll put it up shortly in the chat box. Uh, and make your vote for who we should nominate for our charity of the year. I think we really rather than just make it, there's a there's a uh, front run at the moment, but I'd rather have uh, fifteen or twenty votes before we decide that we, we really do represent what the the uh, the whole membership wants for the chosen charity. Um, again, right now the meetings of uh, the Zoom meetings are free. We usually. Uh, have to pay for room hire and for some breakfast and stuff. So the, the money that we're saving on that and a few other areas we've saved in will help us sort of give some money to charity very shortly. So hopefully we'll announce that next month. We won't we'll have to draw a line over that. So please do check out the WhatsApp group. Uh, vote for your the, the, the charity you want to, to, uh, to be represented by the group. I've uh, got a few apologies. Robbie said there'll be a few minutes late. I think it's about say, Stephen and John Keller said there'll be a few minutes late. Hopefully they'll be joining us. Uh, Ross and Johnny Bloomfield can't meet it there. Uh, they represent support to perform Johnny's company, which is a health and performance and coaching and guidance uh, company. Micah, she can't make it either. She's essential well-being, uh, relaxation therapy, pain control, things like that there. So apologies from her. Um, they were both Ross, Ross and Mika. I wasn't there last week, last month either. So you can see a bit of elevator pitch from Ross when we when you look at the video from last week, last month. Also, 
I started doing interviews with individual members. Uh, I interviewed Robbie last month, and I've interviewed um, Jason Holmes this month. They're both publicly available on the YouTube channel. I'd like everyone to show their support for the network by giving it a like, giving it a share um, on their social media. A, to promote the ABC Business Network, B, obviously to promote uh, the individuals. Uh, so I'll pick forward now that I'm looking for another volunteer to do a little 10 to 15 minute, turn into the 18 to 20, but I'll say 10 to 15 minute interview. There's one of our stars, Robbie, arriving now. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, so if anybody wants to be interviewed by myself, um, then please put your name forward. So there again through the WhatsApp group, it's a membership uh, benefit. So uh, I'll move on to that there. If you join as a member, um, talk to uh, Alan, the treasurer, or contact himself, uh, and we'll get you signed in. It's uh, keep me right here. It's ninety five pounds for the year, but pro rata, so um, we divide that down for the month to join in. Good morning, good morning to everyone. Good morning. Um, what else? What else? That's it. Yes. So there's a few people who can't stay the whole way, but the agenda for the day is going to be, we'll kick off with two minutes um, elevator pitch. Our theme for this month is, where do we go now? So just to highlight any next steps that we're going through. Um, we'll have Mark's talk after that, and then any time left, we'll, we'll split up into a few breakout rooms to have one-to-ones with individual members. So a few people have to go. Um, We'll kick off with the two minute pitches and I'll start with Mavash. So, if everybody wants to, well, uh, the background's off back for everyone else. If you, if you can mute, just to make sure everybody that comes in the room doesn't disturb Mavash. Anybody else speaking? Mavash, tell us about yourself. Two minutes. Good morning. Two minutes is quite a lot, actually. <laughs> so, I'm Mavash Graham. I have an a interior design business uh, on the shore of Loch Ness. Uh, come and visit me in the studio. It's actually quite a nice studio. Um, since it, the lockdown, the business has been really, really dragging down, but it's beginning to blossom. I have few good projects in hand that it's going to sort of work, uh, make me busy for for next few months anyway. So it's good. Uh, where do we go from now? Uh, I don't think the business is going to be as it was before the lockdown. It's either going to be better or uh, it's going to be more uh, level-headed. Um, what it was before lockdown, I think it was unreal. Uh, uh, a lot of time was wasted, a lot of time we had uh, was sort of spent here there, and there that wasn't really purposeful. But now I think it's much, much direct and uh, uh, life is actually is much more meaningful. Um, I was, uh, during this time, I actually got in touch with Una, who is uh, our secretary here. And Una is doing a, uh, uh, some work for me uh, to do with Instagram and my website and uh, she is fantastic, uh, really recommend that she's very passionate, very she, she knows what she's doing and she has an artistic uh, touch to everything that she does so uh, I'm really delighted to twin with her uh, Last night, I was watching a program, uh, uh, George Clark's Amazing Space. I don't know whether anybody has seen uh, Channel 4. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's interesting the way he tackles the spaces uh, into different, uh, you know, he, he, he goes and interviews people that they are changing their environment. Uh, one of the buildings that he was sh showing was a building in Chile, um, a, a house of worship, uh, a Baha'i house of worship in Chile, and the building was just amazing. The way it's been built is just amazing. 
So uh, I'm spending time to sort of look at other uh, uh, buildings and other spaces that it's been uh, redone or are uh, being done. So there isn't much that I can say. If anybody knows of anybody that wants, I specialize on window dressing. So if anybody wants to sort of pass on the message that I could do, um, the, the, I, I could make their environment more uh, beautiful, more friendly, more relaxed, please let me know. And uh, I'm looking forward to Mark's talk. Uh, unfortunately, Mark, I might actually miss you, but if I don't, I'm sure Tron is taping this, yeah? Yes, I recorded it right now and it will be released as well, so that's good. Yes, so, so I, I hear it later if I don't hear it now. And, and, and okay. I'm pretty cross, uh, I think with a lot of people talking about, um, even after the lockdown is finished, working from home, um, I think the home will be a more important environment than ever, so make sure their 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 exactly. interior is good and perfect is hopefully going to be good news for yourself and us. Great, thank you, Tor. <laughs> we'll move on to another uh, person who has to nip off early. So Brian, it's first time here. Uh, so tell us a bit about yourself and how to help your business and where we're going next. Okay, uh, my name is Brian Pope. I'm a local councillor in Banbridge. Um, and from the beginning of June, I'm also the chair of the Council's Economic Development and Regeneration Committee. Uh, so you can imagine I've got quite a big uh, remit. Um, so getting to grips with that. Um, obviously, I, I'm passionate about town centres, local economies, transformation, um, and really innovation and creativity as well. Um, there's quite a lot going on in terms of social distancing, uh, support of cafe cultures, uh, the regional growth deal. Um, and we're also going to meet, be meeting the economy minister as well with a cross-party group to discuss what they can do to help. So it's really just to say hello and if there's any sort of questions. Good stuff, good stuff. Right, so we'll have next, Joanne is uh, again another new face to the group. Uh, so please tell us about yourself. I'm Joanne McConville and my business is Clarity Leadership and coaching company started off last year um, doing life coaching and hypnotherapy and then had to sit back because I wasn't getting enough business sit back and look at what was my passion when I was working I had 30 years in the NHS and um, leading up change at a senior management level so I'm looking at leadership to support leaders and offering a very bespoke program according to the needs of their service so um, the kind of person that I'm looking for is our businesses at the minute that are going through a change process that need some kind of independent assessment, um, look at their culture, bring some kind of very basic awareness about what leadership is. Um, and on the coaching side, I'm looking for a portfolio of businesses that I would be the go-to person for their coaching needs. So really i am just trying to get in through the door and have businesses lined up so i can go and chat to them there's nothing better than going and actually seeing them whether it be zoom or whatever um just to let them know about coaching and how vital it can be to their workforce so it's like leadership with coaching but a very bespoke program um for them so i would go and meet a company look at what they're actually looking for and the time scale I think it would take and then very much you're working out what they need and coming in and assess the baseline and then go into a program with them. Um, to do with COVID obviously a lot of stuff dried up so I had a group of women that regularly would have come and had um, hypnotherapy with me but they're obviously on Zoom now at their meetings and going to one next. Um, I have a coaching client because obviously we can do that on Zoom and it works really really well um, and I do walking coaching which sounds a bit strange but you pick a beautiful place and that's where you do your coaching. Um, so whatever area they're in I will pick a couple of places or they will of where they feel the most comfortable and we'll do it then then I write up the goals and send it to them um, 
that works. That's lovely in the in the summer. So I'd like to do a bit more of that. Um, and apart from that, I'm writing two programs, one on leadership and one on change management. That'll be a booklet, that like a diary or like a Bible that'll keep people going through the change process. Um, so if anybody knows of any small, medium type businesses that I could even get the door in, whether or not they turn out to be clients, just to get known in the local area um, or wider, if you know, I'll go anywhere. So um, wider afield. I just had a contract um, about to be signed, about a week to be signed, a very lucrative one with the prison service. And of course they went into COVID and everything got pulled. Um, so I don't know how long it will be before they sign up to their um, actual program again, um, but at least it's out there and they know who I'm at. I'm at. So with all the different key you know, networks, it's just a matter of me keeping on gotten away but if anybody does I love the names and I'll just go in and hopefully get them and promote what I do. Well, uh, well uh, fingers crossed that the prison service contract comes back on board. I think yeah. it's I've written to a lot of GPs as well because I do clinical yeah. hypnotherapy and they have a social prescribing budget um, and that would fall under that. Um, but of course, COVID again is their priority. So, but lots of people will be going through changes. Hopefully, they'll have learned an awful lot from this experience and need somebody then to work through the change programme with them. Right. Um, but Perfect. we'll see how it goes. Well, lots, of good, lots of good things in the, in the, in the fire. So, fingers crossed, uh, mm -hmm. the network can help you out there. We will move on to next. David, David hasn't had a shout in about two months, so <laughs> let's hear that lovely voice. I'll unmute myself. Um, good morning, everyone. David McKeown from Fire Safety Solutions. Uh, we carry out fire risk assessments across every type of business uh, throughout Northern Ireland, the Republic, and in the UK. Uh, obviously, things have been very different with us with the lockdown, and that we weren't able to address quite a few situations that were coming up with clients. But it got to the stage where there were risk elements involved and we had to get back to work to be able to go out where insurance issues were coming up. Recently, we uh, got a notification from Northern Ireland Fire Brigade that um, a lot of companies had put the likes of their fire risk assessments and carrying out work on the back burner. And the fire service for Northern Ireland were saying, look, insurance companies, being insurance companies, aren't going to um, run with this. They will still penalise, they will still use it as an excuse to get out if something does happen. And they were telling clients uh, to really get all their fire risk assessments, fire risk work completed and their certification in place. I was with um, an HMO, a house multiple occupation yesterday, uh, that the lady had just bought over. Uh, and unfortunately she was in a strange situation where she thought that because the previous owner had implemented the likes of her electricals, EICR certificates and checks and things that they would apply to her. Unfortunately, uh, building control said, no, you have to get these yourself. So she's had to reapply with us to get all her fire extinguishers, her emergency lighting, you name it, the whole remit done again, or she was under the impression that because the previous one had only had them done the year before, she would be fine. Unfortunately, building control are saying no. So really, if you know anybody who's out there in the same sort of situation or needs to get up to date with their fire risk assessments, we're happy to come out on a free site visit, give them an idea of where they are, what they need to do to make sure they're covered by insurance, etc. And happy to have a chat with anyone along those lines. Thank you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Right. Uh, Peter, I haven't seen you in a while as well. I have a few meetings, so let's <laughs> hear from your good stuff. Right, <clears throat> I'll get it out of the way first. Uh, 12 years, four months, three weeks, four days. Uh, <laughs> but who's training? Um, for, those, for those that don't know what on earth that means, that's how long I've been out of the Ulster Bank. I'm free. Um, <laughs> ex Ulster Bank manager, uh, 33 years banking experience, most of that in commercial. Uh, since retiring, very early, very, very early. Um, I have been working on a self-employed basis as a business consultant and mentor. Spend most of my time with new uh, businesses, people wanting to set up a business. Um, needless to say, that has been very quiet for th um, 
March, definitely April and May. The last week and a half, I have seen four, or not virtually seen, four times as many clients as I did in the previous three months. So there's a lot of uh, activity out there of people, uh, for various reasons, uh, deciding to look at the uh, possibility of setting up for themselves. I also assist existing businesses uh, if they're seeking finance, or if they <clears throat> are looking to take over another business um, or extend their business, they look at a reality check to make sure what they're doing makes sense, um, how they're going to do it, how they're going to fund it, how they're going to market it. Uh, so that's basically what I do. My mantra is uh, I make your business the success you want it to be so that you will achieve the lifestyle that you aspire to. Oh, all the way Perfect. Yeah, they have a restaurant called Boulevard. Any idea where it is? Up there. To the left. Right there to the left. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's off the main road. Right. No problem. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Barbara. Barbara, let's hear from yourself next. The lovely barber and tell us about this Thursday's um, podcast, video cast on Facebook. Can you stop off mute there? There you go. Um, yeah, I have a habit of that, as Esther can vouch for, to forget to unmute myself. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Barbara Edwards, obviously by the accent. Um, I don't live anywhere near any of you. <laughs> I'm over in Donegal. I'm originally from Dublin. Um, I started my business a couple of years back, Fee Coached, and um, like Joanne, um, I'm in the coaching field, but I moved away from the, slightly from the leadership side of that, and I have three main areas of focus within the coaching, and that is uh, career women and menopause, going through menopause. So I would be a menopause coach and to help them do that. So if any of your wives, partners or whatever, um, are having difficulty, uh, that's that's my ideal client. I also do a CBT weight management. And um, then I have like a general overall wellness program for people who just kind of want to find that path. So I might be say the start of the journey where they decide then they want to go on to their career, then maybe they would work with someone like Joanne. So I would take, go right back to the very beginning and then you know, move them forward on that. So they're my three main areas in the coaching. But what happened was at the start of lockdown and um, back in March, um, I had um, I had created an event back in January. Well Expo was kind of a seed of an idea last year. And it was the first mental health and wellness walk-in event in Donegal Town up here in the Northwest back in January. And then of course, within six weeks or so of the event, uh, we were locked down over here. So I decided, well, I mean, I got a shock and I was kind of going, oh, what will I do? What will I do? And then I remembered, well, hang on a second. That's exactly what Well Expo was for. So I rang Esther because I know Esther um, a few years now. And I said, uh, listen, any chance um, you want to give us a hand going online and we'll see if we can interview anybody. And it just kind of grew legs. Um I'm hoping to have some more. Turan has been on talking about the hypnotherapy and uh, I'm hoping to interview some other uh, members of the group here like Turan is doing for the YouTube channel. I haven't quite fixed my YouTube channel yet. It's sitting there with a few videos on it. But um, So that could be in the mental health and wellness space. Um, now, the, the thing is, you know, I've had a few inquiries about, oh yeah, well, I provide this as from agents of say, I'm in a, like having an agent for Tupperware, they would come, well, I'm an agent for this product or I'm an agent for that product. And that, that's not really what I, what the kind of business I would interview it would be um, somebody who is actually themselves working in the space that they, their own product, whether like trans is hypnotherapy or somebody might be, um, reflexology or like that coaching but it's actually something they do themselves from within themselves as opposed to well I sell this on behalf of so th that's that's kind of it but well expo today we are talking 12 o'clock live on well expo is um menopause and style uh, because women once they get into that uh, phase some of them 
the kind of everything is just let go. And um, a lot of the time, believe it or not, when it comes to menopause, the husband's partners, you know, they're actually the ones who spot it first. So I don't want this conversation to make anybody feel uncomfortable there, but it happens to be an area very dear to my heart at the moment. Um, so I have no problem talking about it. But that's, that's me. That's what I do. Good stuff. Good stuff. So uh, put the link to the, the Facebook page below. Yeah, the link. Also, I'll just put a link to the ABC Business Network YouTube channel. So please, guys, all check that out. Also, um, if anybody else has a YouTube channel, Put a link into it. I'll ask everyone to like and subscribe ours, and we'll do our best to like and subscribe yours as well. Again, this is part of the networking to help and support each other in whatever social media way we can to make sure everybody gets a bit of a like and share, uh, and that helps us all along. Uh, I'm next? sorry, I, I need to head on to another uh, business call here, but uh, thank you very much indeed, and uh, I'd like to join again next month if that's okay. Super, Ryan. Thanks very much for coming along, and. I'll, like I said, I'll put we'll, this will be this one will be going public, so uh, I'll share the link with you as well. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Bye, okay. everybody. Hey, sir, tell us a bit about yourself and the company. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Esther Lawson, uh, based down in Rutherfield. Um, what do I do? What do I not do? <laughs> Might be more the question to ask. So, I uh, run a digital marketing agency. Um, in my shed. <laughs> I've been told I'm not allowed to call it from home anymore because I have a lovely shed in the middle of my garden. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so we do web design, graphic design, social media management, training, uh, SEO, virtual reality, augmented reality. Uh, yeah, like I said, it would be easier to say what I didn't do. Uh, we do email marketing. I have my own podcast. I'll drop the link into the, uh, into the, thing here we're always looking for um well it's about marketing but uh marketing affects everybody so we're always looking for guests to come on and talk about um how marketing has affected their business or you know their lack of marketing maybe has affected their business um where do we go now um we're building loads of courses everybody's taking their courses online which is good it's something that we've been saying for the last well we've been back in northern ireland for five years now um we were in mexico before that but it's something that we've been saying since even before we came home everybody needs to be online and no it's not going to saturate the market if everybody's online because think about it if you had been better online or had a stronger presence online before covid hit then you would be like the Zoom guys now and floating around in pools of money rather than going, oh, it all stopped. So uh, yeah, obviously there's a few businesses that think, still think, no, no, mine's only in person or only, you know, available to do like face to face, but it's not the way that, it, well, at least for, I don't know. I don't think we'll ever get back to how it was before. I'd love us to. You know, because we all miss our, our Thursday morning meet up and our bacon buddies <laughs> in Banbridge. But I reckon we'll still keep the, the Zoom and, uh, you know, this will be an addition to what we've done before. And it'll be an improvement. And Barbara's going, yes, please, because I can't get to Banbridge on Thursday morning. <laughs> I mean, I mean, as the bash said, you know, I think it's, it's going to be better. You know, it's going to be more focused. It's going to be better. Yeah. Nobody's going to be, everybody's changed. Everybody's changed. It's obvious now. Obvious. Yeah. Thanks, Esther. And from online, everything online, as Esther is, to everything in print, Robbie. And uh, big thanks to Robbie. You're on mute. Picks up off you. I put you on mute when you're chatting with somebody else. I'll, I'll, I'll not unmute you. Far away. Robbie Abraham here. Um, as Turin says, I'm an advertising manager for three newspapers. And we do have an online element as well um, and three papers are the Ulster Gazette and Armagh, County Down Outlook in Ross Island and the Newry Democrat. So we're very much alive and kicking. Things are picking up again for us and um, we've sort of come out of Covid quite strong and things are picking up again. People are still buying the newspapers 
and Curran, I'm sure, will explain that he featured two of them this week with articles. We got some PR there. Um, yes, so we're still operating. Um, we did do home deliveries for those who couldn't get out, and thankfully our circulations held its own again. So, um, yeah, things can only get bet better, so we're pushing onwards and upwards. Excellent. So, buy a local newspaper, folks. Indeed, indeed it's still a valuable tool, and like I say, thanks very much, Robbie. Um, I'm now doing a bit of a column in a couple of the, the papers, so I'm really glad with that there, and obviously share that with the social media um, to help and support the, the print. A good read. Yep. Indeed. Thanks very much for that. Um, who will move to next? Uh, John. John McKenna. How are you guys? Uh, so calling in from the outside office again today. All this talk of walking and uh, outdoors has, has really motivated me to to do as much as we can from outdoors. So, um, Turin and the guys, one of the things I'm, I'm trying to figure out the most is, is how to work the network, you know, as best as possible, how to help you guys or, or, or get any help I can as well. So, um, third time on this morning, just trying to change it up a little bit. How do I say similar things in a different way? Um, and, and effectively, how do, we, how do we connect more? How do we, um, how do we make the most of the network? So, um, Listen, what we do, or what I do, sorry, is a commercial development service. Um, customers, who needs customers? We all do, probably. Um, so one of my main areas is very simply helping find, contact, and win over new customers. Mostly business to business. So short and sweet, anybody that knows anybody who could do with more customers, I'm here to help uh, whatever way it's possible, whatever way you think, um, it's worth a chat. Perfect, perfect. And again, in terms of using the network, as I said at the top of the hour, it's about not just waiting to, to find out about people uh, once a month at this meeting, but take a note of the names, take a screenshot, whatever. Uh, like I said, I'll be posting the videos so it'll be even easier to get all the contact details of everyone. The, the, the chat box will be printed in the description section of the YouTube video. And Good. Good. check out with people during the, during the, uh, the, the month have chats with people, see how they can help you, how you can help them, uh, and that's how, that's how networking works. Right, Mr. Sorry, Tron, right. sorry, I have to go, so Indeed. thank you very much. I'm looking forward to see the video later. Perfect, perfect, Ravash. Okay, Good to see you. Bye. Very much. Bye. 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 And we're uh, now going to say some people say he's the master of cartoons, other, other people just say he's a bit of a joke. But <laughs> Mr. Wilson. Uh, hi, are we all? Uh, my name's Philip Wilson. Uh, second time uh, on virtually. I was down about 18 months ago, two years ago, doing a, a, a full pitch, a 10 or 15 minute pitch. Not going to subject you to two minutes because nobody wants two months of me uh, on, a, on a Thursday morning. Uh, what do I do? Um, I created illustrated animated video. So the, the uh, ladies this morning have talked about video being a powerful tool. I create powerful tools with, with, with video, but they're not real. They're, they're, they're if you want to, to use a line to, to, to work with, they're Ben and Jerry, Ben and Jerry, Tom and Jerry for, for business. Um, uh, Esther used lovely, lovely emotive language about floating in pools of, uh, of money. I, we would actually draw some the, all of us floating in pools of money and, and put that up online. Who I've been working with, I think I said before, or I said the last time, I'm about 300% of target. Because again, what Esther said, people are putting stuff online and they're unbelievable. I always did really fun things. So, so my, my things, you, you could spot them. They're always ridiculous. There's always, they're almost like um, digital online pantomimes with, with big dames and horses and, and, and quite foolish, funny things. But, but everything has been very serious because of uh, COVID. So I've been working, I've done three videos for a lady who's doing stress and anxiety. Um, who's in Scotland. I'm doing um, a video for an app company in Scunthorpe. I'm doing four or five things at home, which one is sexual impropriety, one is um, uh, one's a, a local training company. Then I'll be the fifth video for a local uh, training company. Just wanted to tell the story that they're not like a boring training company. They're a proper, real, cool training company. So they employed me to do that and, and a few other uh, things. So if you want to see any examples, I don't like to 
to fill, fill your, your, your boxes full of things. We'd like to see any examples. My name is Philip Wilson, company's Internet Sense, and I can be found, a bit like Turan, under any digital rock uh, at internetsense at gmail.com, uh, all, those, uh, all those different things. If you just want to chat, I'm great fun. I, 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 you know, help you with your business, uh, but you know, I'll chat through any, uh, any circumstance or create a storyboard for you free of charge or whatever and let you see what we or I could do for you. So that's Philip Wilson, Internet Sense. Well under the two minutes, great crack, and, um, and definitely something worth knowing. Just a pub house there, and all the way to San Francisco. We'll talk to Stephen. <laughs> So you don't have his usual toilet papers behind him? <laughs> no, change, change it now. You know, if updated the system work, give us a, a nice new Dell Latitude uh, system here to work from home. So all is good. Morning, folks. Steve Mignard is my name from WPA, uh, Western Provident Association, uh, a non-for-profit organization specializing in private health insurance and medical insurance. Uh, we do individuals, families, corporate, large corporate, we do an element of cash plan and we also do the full private medical insurance. Uh, currently, things with lockdown have started to ease and the likes of the Wilson Independent Clinic and Kingsbridge and things like that have started to open up for the private sector again, uh, which is all good. Uh, downside would be is the NHS have done a tremendous job, but the waiting times here in Northern Ireland just get longer and longer and longer. Um, we have a promotion at the minute when things are a little bit quieter with, with lockdown. Uh, for individuals or families, we 25% discount in the first year, 15% discount in the second year, followed by a 5% uh, discount in the third year. So certainly if you have private health insurance there and it's due for renewal, keep us in mind and let us, let us give you a quote for that, you know. Um, and likewise, we do corporate schemes as well. So say it's Steve McGarry from WPA, we specialize in private health insurance. Excellent. Again, if you want to put those special offers in the chat box, that'll, that'll be on the... On the uh, on the YouTube channel as well, under the description box. Right, Graham, how's yourself? How's it about today? Hi, Graham. Hi, Graham. Did I lose you? Just as you let this be. I don't know if you can hear us, Graham, but you've frozen this in. Few more seconds. No gold ones, gold price. We'll come back to Graham if you hopefully get the connection back that you can hear us call. And right, we'll move into the next section, which is well, I think I should talk about myself as well. Shouldn't I? Wait, are you back, Graham? I am. Uh, right, we lost it for a second there. How's it going? <laughs> no, I am uh, I'm in the car here, so connectivity is obviously not fantastic. Uh, just thought I'd like to to join you, just to say hello, guys. Indeed. Uh, Tell us about, about yourself, about the business, FSB. Well, FSB has been working away furiously um, throughout COVID. Uh, obviously, we were involved very heavily in all the negotiations with government on the rescue packages, and I hope we've all received some help. Unfortunately, some have fallen through uh, the gaps. We're still working on those. Uh, our member services are there and working as fast as ever. Um, our legal help, free, 24 hours a day, focusing particularly on employment law. Uh, and we know going forward is going off a lot of tax issues coming up. Um, we are going to see an awful lot of employment tribunals after this. We are going to see an awful lot of tax investigations after this. And those are the things that FSB handles free for their members. And we're better than anybody else at doing it. Um, I would just say to anybody who's not a member, have a chat with me. It costs nothing to talk. Uh, lots of members in, in the group. Uh, traditionally, I was one of the original members when it founded, and uh, so I thought I would uh, join you and keep the FSB face in. So good to talk to anybody. I'm delighted to see you back. That's Thank it. you. It's Thank you. Fun. I say glad to see you back because I wasn't about when you were in. You know I mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that crossover. Um, yes. Anyway, this that I give my I'm gonna Mark. I just give you your two minutes at the start off, or incorporate into your talk. Is that okay? Give you a bit more rest time to wake up. Do you want me to do the talk and then straight into the presentation? Yeah, yeah. Is that good or do you want to do it? Hi guys, uh, Mark Fagan from Mark Fagan, the Spoken Steel Agent here. Um, basically, I've been on the stage for 15 years and I've seen, unfortunately, estate agents don't have the best reputation um, of the lot and I've seen some really good people. 
but I've also seen some really bad people who just kind of drag the industry down. And after 15 years of going out and seeing people and trying to give the best customer service I could, I thought it was time to branch out and do it on my own. Um, the problem I kept seeing with the bigger agents was that they were sending valuers out to value your property and give the owners a hard sale. And then once they get back to the office, they handed that property to a junior staff member or an admin staff, negotiator, whatever you want to call them, but they didn't have as much experience as the valuer, which meant that that customer that originally went with that firm because of that person weren't getting that service from start to finish. So my whole view around it is you should have the experience from valuation right through to completion. Somebody with that experience dealing with all the bumps along the road. Um, that way you can kind of assure that you're going to get the top dollar for your house. First of all, the price it correctly going straight off, going straight to market. Um, so you're not having to reduce the property down the line. Um, and secondly, when it comes to negotiation, you just got somebody that's well versed in that sort of area. Um, so yeah, I set that up about six months ago and business is going really well. What happens now is, well, we've been closed for months. So um, we have seen over the last 10 days, just a massive pent up demand for properties. And um, there's been viewings galore and any properties that I've had on the market and offers coming in. The mortgage situation has changed slightly, so a lot of the higher loan to value products have been taken away by a lot of the big lenders, and most of them are kind of sitting around the 85% loan to value, which does unfortunately knock a portion of the first time buyers out of the market, temporarily at least. Um, we would like to see a change, and we are expecting a change of that to back up to 90% loan to value within the next two to three weeks. So we're hoping that things are getting back in. The confidence is definitely there in the market. Um, the pent up demand is there, but we just need to see what sort of, and um, going back to what Graham said there, you know, what sort of um, unemployment levels hit. And I don't think we're going to see the sort of extremities of that come at the end of the year. So uh, all good at the moment, but probably a few bumps in the road to come down the line for the market, I would imagine. So today I am, um, let me just share the screen. Uh, where are we here? Everybody got that okay? Yes. Good job. So today I just wanted to show you or talk to you a little bit about um, anybody that's selling a house or going to be selling a house in the next six months, year, two years, three years. It doesn't really matter. Um, these are just a few tips. And you may think they're quite simple and obvious, but actual fact, the amount of people I go out and see that their property isn't ready for market, um, you wouldn't believe. Um, and I think as an estate agent, you have a, I don't know, sort of a, I'm trying to think of the right word here, um, a responsibility, a responsibility to tell the owner the truth about the property, because if it's not ready for market, you're going to hinder their sale and you're going to cost them money in the long run. So the right advice to give somebody to go on out is maybe say to them that look, your property's not ready for market, you need to spend maybe two months doing X, Y, and Z to maximize the value of it. And yes, it might cost you an instruction in the here and now, but I guarantee you that the business will grow quicker because you're giving people the right advice and the truth, um, rather than just trying to give them the hard sell, get them on the market just so you can get paid. Um, so I'm a big, big advocate of that. So how to maximize the value of your property. There's a lovely picture of me for you all. So yeah, one of the main priorities for everybody is when I talk to my vendors is I want to sell my property for the most money. I want to sell it as quickly as possible. And I want to pay the little, the, the less amount of fee that I have to to the estate agent. So uh, they don't half want the cake and eat it really. Um, so how do you ensure that you maximize your, your home's value to full potential? And what can you do to increase the pay and eventual price? So there are a few measures in here. Some of them are kind of um, bigger, more, costly measures and some of them are very, very simple. It can be done with a bit of DIY and a bit of imagination from home. So first of all, get your marketing strategy right. So in this day and age, and this kind of goes back to what a lot of the members were saying today, um, the online uh, app marketing is very, very important for property these days. So um, high, highly visible presence on property pile, right move, property news, Zoopla, all these kind of main portals. It, they do increase your chances of selling, but only if the presentation is right straight off. 
Um, and so much so, I've actually spoken to Una and Lavash, and I've included them in a package that I offer to my vendors. So I now have a, it's called a gold package, where Lavash would come in, stage the property for photographs, and Una would then come behind her and take the photos and then send it all over to me. So we haven't worked on any projects yet because the market was closed, but now that it's open, I have a few properties coming to market that I have in mind for it. And if the vendors agree, that's what we'll be doing. So what, what the thinking behind that is really is if your house looks as good as it possibly can, like Show House, and it's advertised to the world out there, 90% of selling properties or people buying properties is visual. So if they can see it looking at its absolute best, the reality is you're going to get 50% more viewers than you might have if you just took the photos and looked any other day. Um, with more viewers through the door, you're going to get more offers and you're going to deliver a better price. So again, it's not rocket science, but small steps and a little bit of extra cost at the start can honestly increase your selling price by thousands of pounds from the end of it. So the vast majority of people now search online and most cases they'll head to one of the portals to do so. So that's kind of the heaviest part of the market and the advertising needs to be online. But then some traditional methods like for sale boards, people in the area will see them and that will drive them to the portals to have a look at the property. So again, just going back to what I said, the more demand you can generate for the home, the better your negotiating position will become and this increases your chance of achieving the best price. So make sure your home looks at its best. Again, it might sound obvious, but something sellers can get complacent about. If you're in a rush to get your house sold, it might not be sale ready. And this is where your estate agent has to come in and tell you it's not sale ready. You can't just put it on the market because you're, you're desperate for listings or you're desperate for that income. Again, the right advice to somebody, well, they'll talk to their friends and, and make sure that that right advice goes and your reputation grows for being truthful and honest with people rather than just being a salesman. So if it's not right, your home could sit. The first two to three weeks of any property on the market is the most important time. It's the, the, the time when the most demand comes through, the most viewings come through. And in reality, if it's not sold in that time, it's going to hinder and ultimately down the line, you may have to reduce your price. So that's why getting it right straight off is really, really important. So ensuring that your home captivates rather than repels is something that doesn't take much time, money or effort. It's just a case of getting quick fixes done Correcting the wonky shelf, mending the broken handle, window sills, skirting boards, dust free, dirt free. Uh, these little things that prospective buyers could notice people put off by. So, first impressions are really, really important. So, it's fine to give them no excuse to turn their nose up and look elsewhere. So, and then a little bit on decor. So, equally, something like carpet in the bathroom, you've been a major trend, trend in the 70s or 80s, but it's definitely no longer the case. Um, and it'll only to serve, serve to deter would be purchasers. Uh, the same goes there for out there decor, color schemes, things like that. Property needs to be appealing to a modern audience and as wide a range of buyers as possible. Neutral, minimalistic, and contemporary. These features are likely to have the widest appeal. So Mavash will, will agree with me on that. Um, due to her line of work, she will know that. You know that it sells. And it's almost like those neutral color schemes with a bit of window dressing um, just really do have the effect. And I said it doesn't take much to actually dress the house. So best way of adding value is to carry out home improvements. Um, bigger projects such as extensions, kitchen makeovers, conservatories, garage, loft conversion are likely to bring the biggest uplift, but they do cost money. Um, and they are the most expensive ways of actually adding value. So converting your loft. So this little bit here is actually, I think a little bit inaccurate. Um, converting your loft to another bedroom and ensuite bathroom for example, could cost between 25 to 35. I think we've kind of overshot that a little bit with this um, statistic, probably based in England, because actually it costs probably half the price to convert your loft than it would to put an extension on your property. So if you know anybody thinking of selling in a few years time, it's certainly a way that you can maybe spend 10 to 15,000 converting that, and it will uplift the value of your home by sort of 20%. Um, the, the one thing I would say about that is properties, different properties will have ceiling heights. So based on, um, sorry, it's just a bit glory pulled up in my house. Um, based on the type of property, so if it's semi-detached townhouse, detached, etc., 
or the street in the area that it's in, they will have a seating height. So just be sure to talk to somebody and get a bit of advice before you add that on because you might have reached your seating limit and you won't achieve any more for your property due to the area, etc. Um, so extensions are also popular. 22% of homes sold in 2019 had an extension. They can both add value and attract more buyers. Again, just be careful. It's probably better on a detached property because of the cost of adding it on. Um, kitchens, so the recent boom popularity for kitchens, with many now seeing as the most important room in the home, it just means that the kitchen is now the first thing that people go to because it's the most expensive room to actually replace in the home. It's, it's one of the things buyers constantly look at and it goes back to 90% of it being visual. So if they're not able to see and put their imagination into what they can transform it into, you can forget about it, they're gone. They're away elsewhere and they're gonna look at six more properties that have more modern kitchens in it. Uh, it doesn't cost the earth, you don't have to replace the whole kitchen. You can look at worktops, you can look at doors, you can look at getting it spread. Again, a bit of a facelift um, will 100% help. And um, so that you can just see there, 65% of homeowners have revamped their kitchens before selling up. So again, it's just, it's one of the recommendations I make constantly for people thinking about putting their property on the, on the market. So sometimes these larger scale projects could require planning permission and there are no guarantees, of course, that they'll help your home to sell and increase its value. But generally speaking, loft conversions, extension, kitchen makeovers are likely to increase the value of your home. The outlays are, will be substantial and they won't be completed overnight. There are easier, less time consuming and more affordable ways to increase the value of your home. So with everything kind of going on with COVID, the garden space has never been more important as well. Um, people are spending a lot more time in their gardens. Um, and I think at this stage, you can do a lot of DIY. It doesn't cost a lot if you're doing quite a bit of it yourself to do a makeover in your garden. Um, and I think if anybody is thinking of selling soon, that would be one of the areas I would definitely focus on. So uh, I'll speak a bit more about curb appeal, a little bit down, but certainly people pulling up to the house to look at it, first impression is gonna be the outside of the house. So again, if you have a front garden, make sure that's the first project that you do. Tired looking front door, again, lick of paint or maybe upgrade it to PVC door, things like that. Again, a couple of hanging baskets, things like that. But we'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, and driveway parking is important for people. So um, tired looking front door, upgrade a bathroom, redecorate, create a driveway, double glaze your windows, make your home smarter and more energy efficient. So working with the right estate agents. So I've kind of touched on that in my sort of elevator pitch at the start, but um, people generally do overlook it and there's no doubt and we'll maybe have three agents out and they'll end up going for the one that's charging them the cheapest fee, but actually that might not be right for them. You know, they need to listen properly to the advice the estate agent's given them, how honest and truthful they are with them. And actually what evidence they're showing them that this is how I've arrived. Do you want to have a business number for no? Um, or his personal number, she was like a No, 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 it's just lobby. So, crucial but often overlooked factor choosing the right agent in the first place drastically improve your, your chances of maximizing the value of your home. A good agent will have the expertise, local knowledge, adaptability, strong worth at work ethic, good communication skills, and ability to work under pressure that is needed to push through a sale. They'll deal with any bumps in the road, build a good relationship between you and the buyer and just being really quick off the mark for correspondence and keeping in touch with all the solicitors the whole way along. A lot of agents would agree sales, hand it over to the solicitors and just wash their hands of it. And um, when actually solicitors, you know, a lot of them sometimes can be like school kids, they won't talk to each other um, and they'll make sure everything's sent by uh, posts and fax rather than email and lifting the phone to each other. Whereas if you're involved in that process, it really can, can shave a few weeks off the overall process just by being proactive and making sure you're doing weekly updates for all your clients. Um, very simple but very effective. So again when it comes to mortgages, conveyance and removals, other crucial elements, you know the likes of a good agent will be able to point in the right direction and actually want to help with those, those bits and pieces even though they're not getting paid for them. You know you're just it's part of the overall service and I think people have forgot so a lot of agents have forgot that it's actually a people business, not just a property business. Um, so I think that's really important. So they will use their, their experience and knowledge 
on local national trends to ensure you set the right asking price to begin with, thereby increasing your chance of selling fast and for the best price. And then additionally, we'll help to target the right kind of buyers and we'll work with you to ensure that you're in the strongest possible position when it comes to negotiating and packing over the final asking price. So there'll be, a, there'll be a demographic for a certain type of property and we'll identify who they are and how to appeal to them, especially with the likes of uh, Facebook advertising for properties is becoming a hell of a lot more relevant. Um, so, much, so much so, like I put a property on last week on Facebook um, and I'm just doing this with every property. I'm taking out maybe two or three photos before it actually goes live on the market and putting a little teaser up on Facebook just to kind of get the appetite flowing. And there was two viewings booked before the actual property went live on Property Pop, just from that little snippet that I put up there. So it really does. And the presentation of that home was fantastic. So it really just shows you the difference um, in what it can make. So know what your buyers want. Um, so it's never wise to restrict yourself but could it be the case your home is particularly appealing to one type of demographic? If you're selling a starter home, for example, you will probably experience high demand from millennial buyers. Demographic is keen on strong transport links, good social scene, and minimalistic decor. Um, and recent research has revealed that this group of buyers have a number of must-haves from home. So kitchen island, smart appliances, white kitchens, kitchen diner, um, patio doors and pantries are all kind of high on their list of priorities. And one more thing to touch on there uh, with millennial buyers, and actually more so every buyer at the minute, the open plan aspect of any house at the minute is really appealing. They're liking the open plan kitchen, diner, sunroom, kitchen, diner, living area. Um, so Because I think we've shifted from a going to the pub to entertaining at home kind of uh, mission at the minute. So that open plan area is really appealing. So if you have that space and there's a wall in the way, Get somebody in, look at maybe taking down that wall, putting up a steel beam to support that if required. But certainly that type of space is a real uh, box ticker for, for buyers at the minute. So, um, so often you'll find that buyers will pay a bit more certain things. So again, parking space, I suppose this all depends on area. You know, this would probably be parking space to be more relevant in an urban area or not so relevant in a rural area because you're going to have the parking. Green space nearby, transport links to the doorstep, proximity to good or outstanding local schools. <clears throat> so if you're if you're beside a real excellent education establishment, generally speaking, your property price is going to be higher. So you may find that older buyers and families are most interested in green space, local schools, while millennials prioritize restaurants, bars, uh, yeah, we like to drink. <laughs> um, parking space is often highly desirable. And again, this just was touched back on the gardens and the, on the good local amenities, so again, all good selling points for selling homes. So if your home has attributes you know buyers will be after, don't be afraid to make this an integral part of your sales pitch or shout about it during viewing. So really touch, it's just reinforcing it, backing it up all the time that you have this and um, people will want it. So curb appeal, so again, just going back to what we were saying, first impressions are crucial. Um, this is never true when it comes to a property. It, it, it really does count double. I cannot stress enough if people pull up to your house and there's weeds overgrown in the front garden and the, the front door is hanging off and there's a crack in the front window, you may forget about it. They may just turn around and drive away there and then. Um, it's, it's so important. And actually, when it comes to selling a house, I find buyers actually are driving around if you're in a housing development. They're driving around and they're looking around the development at the front gardens. They want to see how well they're kept. They want that is an indicator of how nice an area or how good an area it is, how many properties are rented, because if they're rented, you're likely to see much more uh, overgrown grass and not taking any care and attention in it. And again, that will put the buyer off if you're in that housing development. So the better kept the front gardens and, and the curb appeal is, the more chance they're going to come inside and they're they're going to come inside with an open mind and a positivity rather than pulling up and being negative when they step through that front door. So again, very simple, but very effective. Um, so this can be achieved in a number of short, simple, inexpensive steps. Tidy it up, sweep any leaves or litter, consider planters and shrubs or adding some hanging baskets to the driveway, just ensure it's clean, tidy, well maintained. You may also want to give the front of your home a fresh deck of paint, wash or sand the tired looking front door, clear any drains or gutters and clogged up. So again, a crucial first impression. So that is the end of the presentation. And thank you very much for listening. Hope I haven't bored you all.
No, it was very good, very good. Uh, I'll, open the, I'll, I'll open the floor for any questions, but I'll, I'll start the questioning off in terms of, I know what you're saying about the like, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of things you can do to, to, to improve the house. I always have that fine line between, well, if, if I revamp the kitchen, maybe the kitchen's looking a bit dated, so I revamp the kitchen, put a couple of grand in the kitchen, and knowing that within two weeks of them moving in, they might say, well, I don't like that new kitchen, I'd rather have a different type of new kitchen. You know. So the key point here is within them moving in, so you want the buyer to move in, yeah. you want them to buy the house and actually come through the door. So revamping the kitchen is, is a really important part of, first of all, again, it goes back to the presentation. So when you're putting a property online, I could put two next door properties, two semi-detached houses, three bedroom semis on the same house and development online at the same time. One of them has a new kitchen and one of them has a dated kitchen. Now there will be five grand difference or 10 grand difference between the price because of the kitchen. But I guarantee you they will flock to the dear house. So this house on the right that has a data kitchen will maybe see two viewings in the first two weeks, and this house may see 20. So, and, and that it could definitely be the difference, John. And I think if you're seeing 20 viewers on the property with a new kitchen, you're much more likely to hit your asking price or go above that than next door property that has that data kitchen and has two viewers and will probably like to have to come down on their asking price because. Yeah they're not in a strong negotiating position. With more interest, you're in a strong negotiating position. With poor interest, you're gonna to have to give a little bit because you wanna make the, the buyer wants to feel like you're getting a bargain because they're not up against anybody. So you're, you're just coming up against it if your presentation isn't right. So it's 100% gonna be important for you to revamp that kitchen for one market. Uh, if you give them somebody might not like it, yeah. but I guarantee you they'll not change it for four or five years even if they don't like it, but it's shiny and it's new and it doesn't need anything done to it, yeah. it, it sits well with them, so. Good advice, it's the old, it's the old adage, you gotta spend money to make money sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions guys for Mark? Uh, um, just to say, like I was out um, viewing houses we're hoping to buy soon. Um, and I was out viewing one, uh, had no pictures online. It was just the outside of the house. And when you got there and the mm -hmm. smell of smoke, like the smell of cigarettes automatically turned off. I don't think that even passed a Hoover over the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just seriously guys presentation <laughs> is just absolutely key. And I mean, the house was on mm -hmm. at a cheap price. And the, the uh, estate agent that had it had told us, you know, from the start, it's going to need 30 to 40 grand's work done to it. So that's why it's on so cheap. <laughs> I'm looking at it going, you're going to have to completely take up all the carpets. You're going to have to take off all the wallpaper. You're going to have to, like, you it's know. Not you? <laughs> pretty much. And it was, a, you know, a 10 year old build house. So it's not an old house. Wow. But having, you know, looking at these things and. Like you walk in and there's flies everywhere and there's dishes in the kitchen sink and you're just going, no, I, I, no, I couldn't. I couldn't. I don't care that you've got space out the front and space out the back and there's no other houses around you and stuff. This, no, I couldn't. You couldn't just move in no. and start. You'd have to. <laughs> yeah. And that so, bag was probably a trip hazard as well. Oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't well, be surprised. It's, it's <laughs> that a 10 year old property has that amount of damage basically into it, but every single property will have a market and somebody to target with that property. But um, the market strategy needs to be right and the pricing needs to be right. So somebody will probably buy that property um, because it's priced correctly and it's priced accordingly based on what yeah. you've done to it. But yeah. certainly that owner, I don't know, he must have had it rented or whether it was repossessed. No, not here, no, but it was the owner, the owners were living in it. It was the owner sort yeah. of showed us around. This, um, this really comes back to the home truths and um, like, like it or don't like it, like it or hate it. Um, for me, the home truths are hard to deliver sometimes um, with vendors, but if I'm not giving them my advice, my right advice, what I would do to the property, make sure they maximize their property, property price, then I'm not doing my job. I find it easy to sit back and say, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to offend them. Nonsense. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, if it offends you, I'm sorry. But you, you've got me out to do my job. Yeah. You've got me to value property and tell you how to maximize the <laughs> So 
I'm going to tell you the truth about what I think. Um, if you listen to that truth, you're going to achieve a hell of a lot more than you would by putting it on the market as it sits. If you listen to what I, the advice that I give and then still say to me, I want to use you to sell my house, but we don't want to do anything. Well, okay, let's have a chat about what, where we price it then. Because if you're not willing to do anything, we need to, see, we need to find our level. Yeah. Get people through the door. So, yeah, because another thing that I find, um, like I said, I've been, we've been looking for a while, but uh, we were out uh, a few months ago at a house and the guy automatically turned around and said, the estate agent made me put it on at this price, but I'm not accepting anything less than this other price because he built it in the boom. So he's thinking how much it cost him to build and not thinking like right now we're in the middle of a crisis. Yeah. And, you know, if you haven't had people offering and the house has been on for three, four months, then, you know, you got to... Yeah, about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Plus you think about the area. I mean, I'm in Riff Island. <laughs> Who wants to live here? Like... <laughs> Get people to dip their toe in the water and, and chance their arm and put it on the market for a certain price that's not achievable. To be honest, something like that I'd walk away from. You know, if they're expecting a hundred grand or fifty grand more than I valued it at, unless we find a really common ground that's maybe ten percent above what I valued it at, I'm walking away because I don't want them sitting. Do you know that way. Yeah. I'm not doing the job and I don't want to. A lot of agents will go out and. and sneakily overvalue a property just to try win the business over the other agents mm. giving them false hope that their property is worth 10 grand more than the other two agents have valued that and um, in the reality that agent's going to go back to that vendor in two three four weeks time and say i got it a little bit wrong can you drop the price to the, the other two valuations that this deal agent has given you so that's why it's so important to actually help the vendor understand why we've arrived at this price and why we valued it at this price and it's an important part of doing your research. Um, you know, property size, we need to know the square footage. So I get that online beforehand. Um, I will do a search of a sort of, depending on the property, it could be a half a mile radius, mile radius, two mile radius. If it's very rural, it'll be a five mile radius. And I'll be able to show them then what properties have sold, when they sold, how much they sold for, how long they were on the market, if they ever have reduced their price. So it's about really sitting down and letting the vendors see the comparables and why, what similar homes have sold for in the area and what they had that was different to the one you value. So if it had a new kitchen, new bathroom and the one you value didn't, well, you're automatically saving 20 grand off the price straight away, you know, and you have to tell them that. So uh, again, it's just, it's important not to, I, I would walk away from properties if the owner's expectations are far too high because I can't do a job for them. Yeah. Joanne, you're Joanne, muted. You're on mute and you asked the question yet. Joanne, let me, let me, let me see. I'll take you off mute. I can't unmute you. Joanne, yeah, there you go. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, can you hear you? Yeah. I always find it amazing how people go and make an, um, just such an investment on two visits or three visits. It's mm -hmm. quite incredible and you're so nice you don't look into the nitty gritty of everything that's there. I moved in to a house um, and they had painted around the pictures so when yeah. they off, it was a different colour they had varnished round a mat so that cost us thousands to get it re-brought down to all the woodwork and that you know we spent we ended up spending about 30,000 revamping the, the house They'd left their, when they moved out, they'd left their dishes in the sink. They'd left half of themselves in the shower. You know, it was just, I just went in and cried. You know, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. They'd had so many pictures. It looked all right. I knew I was going to have to do, get a new kitchen and stuff, but it was unbelievable. It was disgusting. And I, think, I went in and said, I can't move into this until we've power hosed it, yeah, painted it, you know. On a, on a couple of occasions where people have actually, my vendors have actually left properties like that. Um, now obviously we've got control over how they leave them, but you know, it's nice to leave a property ready for somebody to come into, clean the whole, mum and dad moved house about four weeks ago. And you know, they cleared all the furniture out, they went back in the next day and completely blitzed the place. And, you know, cleaned it all down and behind everything and inside appliances. I learned a lesson of not to be shy at looking at everything. 
yeah. you know, going oh, behind the picture frames. Right. I'd be lifting off their their mirrors and their picture frames. <laughs> Never going through that again. Um, the owner to vacate the property when I'm showing it and tell the buyers, look, open cupboards, do it. Yeah. Wherever you want to poke around, that's why the vendor's not here. So you feel more comfortable. The buyer feels more comfortable with the agent than if the owner's sitting in the property too. Yeah. So it's always nicer to show it that way. They'll spend longer there. They'll take a bit more time in each room and they won't yeah. be good to open drawers and cupboards and look at the, if they're savvy enough to look at those bits and pieces. But I've actually seen on a few occasions where the seller's solicitor has ha had to hold some funds back because the property has been in the state that you've just mentioned there. Yeah. Um, so and I would have loved to have been able to do that, say to them, look, I'm dropping 10,000 off this because this is, you know, after you see it, you, you've you signed up to it by that stage, it's too late. But yeah. um, honesty around it is so important. You know, it's yeah. just awful. Yeah, and it's, it's again, it comes back to, unfortunately, I'm not saying the agent done anything wrong in this case, but it comes back to, the agent and the morality of the agent really you know if they're there, there things yeah. like you know you speak they had a septic tank it was in the country and they put it in wrong so it um was sort of down a hill right. so it was all blocked up so within the month i don't know how many times they must have got somebody out to do it but um yeah, it, cleaned off and it was the angle of the septic tank so that would have cost us another ten thousand pounds to change the septic tank to oh, it was just and one after the other Building control would usually sign off on the septic tanks. Uh, I don't know what happened. It was out in the country. It was a wee, yeah. you know, but they'd been in for about 10 years in the house. Yeah. Um, and it looked like they hadn't cleaned for 10 years. Right. You know, it, it, there was rafters. One of the guys in one of the other groups actually bought it and he was sitting in my living room, which was quite, <laughs> quite peculiar. Um, yeah. But it, you could have, there was beams and you could have scraped off the stuff from the top it was just it was um so no it's just disappointing you know it took me a while to stop crying <laughs> i think there is a responsibility on agents you know as i said there are a few there that really drag the industry name down but i'll give you an example you know i was out with a girl yesterday showing a property in carrygart manor in Craigavon. Um, now this girl's moving from Corian. she works in Craigavon hospital and she's moving closer obviously and this is her first house completely loves the property and then she'd asked about the area so you know we got chatting and she was able to tell me that she was from a military background so you know my responsibility then is to tell her that if anybody knows Craig Avon, drum bag obviously we know cars get burnt out and there's riots and all sorts of drum bag it's, it's a heavy republican hot spot um, so my responsibility to her then is to tell her that, that half a mile down the road is this hot spot and look whether she buys the property or not I wouldn't forgive myself if she bought the property and then got forced out of the property um, because of where it was, it was because somebody got wind of that you know so i think other agents would just sit by and say oh no the area is perfect and there's nothing to worry about here it's totally safe again i just think there's responsibility the vendor pays you yes but the buyer puts a trust in you to make sure that you're telling them the right information and giving them the right facts about the area so um i still think she'll buy the property because she knows it's far enough away and there's no actual hassle in it so I do think she'll come back with an offer today. But, you know, if I'd sat here today, I'd have been thinking about her, saying I should have told her about that. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, that's just my take on it. But Yeah. So, any, any other questions before we go on? Go on once, go on twice. Good stuff, Mark. Thanks very much for that. Show you how much work goes on behind the scenes, both, uh, you know, by the series and, and, and the, the work that people really need to put in to present the house. I forgot, I forgot one two-minute pitch, and that's myself. Um, change backgrounds to feel the hypnosis. I could have forget myself, but I see the best to last and all that. My name is Ron Mirza. My company's Feel Good Hypnosis. I use hypnosis to help people change their minds to improve their lives, whether it's teeth grinding, IBS, um, you know, working with kids for bedwetting, you biting, stress and anxiety is a big thing these days. Thanks to going online, um, I was actually working with someone in the Philippines this week. So uh, again, and, and again, I was even talking to my neighbor last night and he's a thing. He says, yeah, working away online. And he went, can, can you do hypnosis online? So it's, it's still something people aren't educated in. This is not about beams coming out of my eyes or, or magnetic seals coming out of my hands. This is a communications and connecting 
at a communications level and can be done very effectively over Zoom. So uh, pass that information on to anybody that's other anxieties that why don't you have a, a Zoom call? We're starting to do a few select in persons, um, but still very much working on Zoom and it allows me to work worldwide. So that's me, Tran Mears, I feel good hypnosis, and I'll change the banner back for the last 10 minutes that we have. Maybe only we have time for one, you know, four or five minute one to one. So I'm going to set up the breakout rooms. We'll, we'll call it there for a day. Um, Listen, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Mark, for, for informing us about that. I think it's very educational. Um, nobody said they have any objections to this going public, so I'll be, I'll be releasing this when I get around to do it. I think it's to take off the uh, little startups and end offs. Um, and, and yes, if you're not a member already, and it only applies to you, Joanne, but anybody that's listening is not a member. And Philip. Please do. And, and Philip. And Philip. Yeah. I know Philip. I like to just. I like to just ghost in and ghost out. <laughs> um, you, you get you get your name and details on our website, which helps SEO for your business. Um, you get uh, to join the WhatsApp group and keep informed of things throughout the month. Uh, and you can do things like I've just posted on LinkedIn. Can you go and share it? Can you go and like it and comment on it to help raise the profile? Things like that there. And uh, what else? What else? Yes, again, as part of the package we're offering, first come, first serve to, to use this uh, paid license of, of Zoom. So if you're uh, whether holding, I used it the other week, just holding a, a family uh, quiz night over Zoom, but whether you want some uh, tie up with some uh, old college mates or whatever, and you're doing more than one to one, rather than paying for Zoom, uh, as a member of this, you get, you get that opportunity to uh, so, could you send me those details? I might use that for the quiz this week. <laughs> Indeed, give, give us a uh, just uh, talk to myself or Esther uh, an email. Oh, um, okay, Trent. I'm too busy. Talk to me. Talk to me. <laughs> I know. I know as well. That's why you, nobody knew about the meeting until about last night. <laughs> like, oh, I forgot to send out the email. It's, under the... <laughs> it's been mad. But... All right, guys. Thanks very much. Right. We'll call it to an end there.